Hello everyone and welcome to episode 8 of the Artisan Workshop tutorial series and in this episode we are going to add dialogue for the NPC that we spawned in the last episode so that we can actually interact with the NPC and make him do something useful for us. So to find um, an example of how to do uh, how to do dialogues, so let's go look at the tavern. So in in our in our DN spy episode, uh, we shortly looked at the tavern employees. So we can actually go back here to see how they do dialogue. So if we just open tavern employees campaign behavior and search for dialogue, you can see that they have add dialogues here, and if we if we go through the call chain of how where this comes from, you can see that uh, in registry events, they listen to on session launched event, and then from there, they just call add dialogues. Um, basically, every behavior can add dialogues to the campaign starter, and we will look in more detail what these uh, add dialogue lines actually do and it will be more clear as we go along. But first of all, we need to basically copy the, what they do here. So we need our own on session launched listener. And we have our behavior where we can add all this stuff freely. So let's just go ahead and start with that part, which we know how to do. So we want to listen to on session launched events. And I don't want the action part because that is not actually required. That is just something that the DN spy generates. But here we want um, on session launched is fine name for us. And we can use Visual Studio to generate this method sub. Let's call this starter. And I think we I want to copy the same format that they had here. So they had add dialogues. As a separate method, so let's just copy that. So let's call let's call add dialogs with our starter, and then again use Visual Studio to generate the method. So then, I was actually thinking that we could um, we could add some dialog lines for the tavern keeper before we go into our artisan brewer. So as a as a like practice, we can add dialog for the tavern keeper as well. So to do that, let's just try to look at roughly how this works. So you see that um, some of the lines call add dialogue line and some of the lines call add player line. So add dialogue line is what the NPC will say to us and add player line will give, will add more options to the options to choose from for the player. So let's just say that we want to add um, Button for the player where they can ask the tavern keeper uh, if he sells artisan beer for us. So that would look uh, something very much like this ask quest. So this is tavern keeper ask quests um, where the player can say, Do you know of anyone who might have a task for someone like me? So this is pretty much exactly what we want. So let's copy everything up to the actual text. And so one thing you might notice here, that nowhere in this chain of adding this player line is the actual tavern keeper NPC or agent or location character mentioned at all. So the dialogues are actually just completely global, but the implications will become more clear as we add more dialogue for our own NPC. But you don't actually need to um, know anything about the, the your conversation target, the guy you're talking to, to add dialogues. So let's just add, you need to just make sure that these uh, IDs make sense. So these are, let's, let's look at the parameter names. So the first one is ID. So that's ID for this line of dialogue. And then there's input token and output token, which are kind of like, uh, they're kind of like rooms in a text adventure game, if you've ever programmed text adventures. 
So they usually you have some sort of like concept of state where you are, which is like room name. So this input token and output token are like um, a conversation state name and the next conversation state name. So in this case, uh, so we need some sort of ID for this. So this will be tavern keeper talk ask artisan beer. That's something unique. Input token is the it's the state. It's a dialogue state where this line will be added. So tavern keeper talk is the correct one. And this tavern keeper ask quests is the next state for the conversation. So this will be tavern keeper ask well or tavern keeper artisan beer will be our output token. So the output token is the next state of the conversation. Text will be do you sell artisan beer? And there are a couple more arguments here. So first of all, there's condition delegate. Um, and then there's consequence delegate. These are required arguments. But at the moment, so, well, I can explain what these do. So condition delegate is, uh, is, del is like, um, this is a me like method that determines if this line of dialogue should be used. And the consequence delegate is another callback, which is like stuff that happens after, or like uh, what happens when you press this dialog button. But in like normal conversation, these are pretty often just no and no, if you just want to move to the next state in, con in the conversation. You don't actually uh, need a condition and you don't need a consequence, but Oh, obviously you want your conversation to eventually achieve something. So in some cases you will need this, like here you have on condition, uh, here you have condition and then you have delegate. And this is uh, something about asking for companions. So this will check what type of companions are, are available, I guess. Um, so this would already add, uh, add this dialog option for asking this question to us. So we also need to uh, put in the response. So that will be um, something in that happens in this state. This was our output token. So for the next one, this same thing will be our input token. So this will be some um, unique ID. And this will be our input token, which is the same as our output token last time. And then this can go back into the main state. And the main state here is the Terran Keeper talk, where you, um, which is player's turn to speak about what he wants to ask. So there's sort of like turns between player lines and dialogue lines in the conversation. So this will be something like, uh, but this will be the Tavern Keeper's response. So let's do something like ah, the greedy pastor that the um, brewery doesn't want to sell his stuff to me. So the Tavern Keeper will tell us that we need to go talk directly to the NPC at the brewery. And after we have done this, we go back to the main state of this conversation, which is the Tavern Keeper talk. And if we look at what Tavern, all the, all the uh, dialogue lines um, that have Tavern Keeper talk, their input token, you see that there's actually only two that's less than I expected. Or is there more down here? Well, there's more here. So there's two more here, or one more here. And one more here. So you see that uh, that's sort of like the hub for this conversation. OK, 
Okay, so now we can run this and see what happens. So we should be able to talk to him. And we have this new dialogue option. Do you sell artisan beer? Greedy bastard at the brewery doesn't sell his stuff to me. And... And then for some reason... Then for some reason it exists from the dialogue, but I was expecting it to come back to this screen. Because I have typoed here. Tavern Keeper talk. So you have to actually make sure your strings are correct. But not a big deal, we can just quickly test it again. Okay, and this time if I click here, you can see it comes back to this view. But this is not actually... Um, this line has a small uh, lore problem in that, for example, this city, uh, Modern Moderna, uh, doesn't have a brewery. So I want to add a bit more flavor into this dialogue by adding a condition here that it will check that this town has a brewery and then we get a different dialogue if it doesn't have one. So for now I want now I want to add a condition for this line of dialogue. So we just um, make a lambda here. So lambda method we can write this in line. Um, and this needs to return a boolean which will be the like true if this dialogue should work and false if this dialogue should be skipped. So we can just iterate through the workshops of this current settlement and see if we have a brewer here. So let's just write a loop. Let's go settlement, current settlement, which give us gives us the town where the player is right now. Very convenient. Uh, we need to go town because not all settlements are towns. And then we need to go uh, workshops. And if workshop type if we find a brewery, we can return true. And otherwise, if none of the workshops were breweries, then we return false meaning that this line of dialogue is not active. And then we can add another one with the same input and output tokens, but different ID. So this will be Tavern Keeper Talk Artisan Beer B. And this will be here the text will be something like um, We don't have a brewery in town, you have to look somewhere else. And this time we don't need a condition, because this will be our fallback option. So this will be the thing that will be used if we don't have a brewery. So the first one needs the condition, but the last one can be fallback without a condition. So now, for example, in Murnoth, which is a town without a brewery, we should get the second dialogue option. And we do. And then let's finally check in a town with a brewery that we do indeed match the condition here. for the first dialogue option. And we do, so that seems to be working. Okay, so now I think we can go ahead and add dialogues for the NPC that we spawned. So let's go pay him a quick visit. Yes, here you are. So we want to add some sort of dialogue that will trigger when we start talking to this guy. So to do that, we will need to figure out 
the starting condition for this dialog. And every time you start talking with someone, the first input state is called start. And then you're supposed to write some sort of uh, condition, like for example here, the uh, sort of entry condition into this dialog with the tavern keeper is to check that the one-to-one -one conversation character occupation equals tavern keeper. So we need to do something pretty much exactly like this, but for the NPC that we spawned. So we need input token to be start, and then we need condition that checks, that matches preferably only for the NPC that we spawned. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. And I will wrap this first one in brackets because this is the tavern keeper portion and this will be the um, our NPC portion. And these brackets don't do anything. It's just a code organization thing. Well, one thing that they do is that they hide local variables that are defined here. But it's just organizational thing but i quite like this pattern so and this will be add dialog and dialog line and this will be artisan brewer let's call it artisan brewer talk i don't know if the id is final but it doesn't matter and the input token is start output token can be artisan brewer and then text will be um, howdy, would you like, I have to purchase some artisan beer. And here we need the condition and our condition will be, well, I don't know if I need something very similar to the tavern keeper one. So we need Character object, one to one conversation character. And this will be um, I guess we will use so we want for spawning we got the character object from the culture, from the settlement culture. So let's just copy this actually and compare against this thing. So if one to one conversation character equals settlement current settlement culture current master, this will be our final condition. If this is character object, this is character object, and this is character object, this is perfect. And we don't have consequence delegate because we just want to move to the next phase of the dialogue, of the conversation. So now we check that this condition is true from the input state of start. And if it is true, we end up in the conversation state of artisan brewer. That seems like it's good enough for now. And then we want to add the player dialogues. So this will be sure. I'll take one. And uh, I need a uh, output state. I guess we can just end the conversation here. We need a con we need a consequence. Eventually we will want to have a consequence with which is that we buy it. So let's just leave this empty for now and we also want um clickable condition delegate the clickable condition delegate if this option should be grayed out or actually clickable and we want to check the player has enough money to actually buy the item so we will actually need a clickable condition so let's also put a placeholder placeholder here 
And I'm not sure I remember how to write a clickable condition because... Because it is a bit more involved. You need text object explanation out. So this will be the argument. And then we need to, well, here we need to check if the player has enough. So here, if main hero gold is less than two, you return false. This is actually almost exactly what I want. Um, so if main hero gold is less than two, you return false and set the explanation to something. And otherwise you return true. Let's say it costs 100. Oh, let's, let's say it costs 200. Um, then the explanation will be not enough money. And return false. And else, explanation will be empty. We need to set it anyway because it is an out parameter and it has to be set. So this should be new text object. Is there some sort of text object empty? Yes. And return true. Okay, so that will be our condition if this is actually clickable at all. And then we need a consequence delegate, but let's see if it's empty for now. The consequence delegate will be where we actually purchase, purchase the item, where we will decrease our gold amount and increase um, the count of this item in our inventory. But we also need second dialog option from the same input state, which is no, I don't want to buy one. Oh, and actually, this should lead to, like, uh, I want to add one more state after the purchase, which will be, like, uh, like, th thank you, come again, or something like that. Um, and this will be where we... Don't buy one. So let's first set this one. Now I'm good, thanks. And this end, this leads to state where we declined to buy. And let's add some flavor text. The organization for this will be kind of tricky. Um, the organization for this will be kind of tricky because the dialogue is actually a tree, but the code is linear. So you just have to make sure that the order where you write this makes sense for you. So this will be the line that happens when you, the his response when you refuse to buy. So this will be um, your loss line or something like that. And this is finally where we can exit the conversation. And we don't need to do anything, because this is the case where we don't do anything. So there's no condition and no consequence. But here, we actually decided to buy one. So we should add a thank you line. Let's call this thanks for business.
So here you see that our output token was this. So we have to put that one as our input here. And this will be, thank you, come again. Exclamation mark or dot. Let's do an exclamation mark. So then, now let's see if this makes sense. We start the conversation. He starts talking to us, asks if we want to buy. We go to Artisan Brewer. And in Artisan Brewer, we have two layer lines that we can say. We can either say, sure, I'll take one with the condition that we need to have enough money. Or we can say, no, nah, I'm good, thanks. And this leads to artisan, the line where we actually take one leads to artisan brewer purchase. And he will say, thank you, come again. And if we said, if we go to artisan brewer declined, he will say your loss. So this seems to be correct to me. And then only thing we need to do if this seems working is to actually decrease the player gold and increase the item count. So now let's just go in game and see if our dialogue tree is actually working at all. And again, in this, we nowhere in this did we actually specify what NPC we are talking with, but we can put a breakpoint here in our entry condition just to sanity check that this condition, our code is actually running when we, um, our code is actually running when we start talking with this guy. So let's call the Fuka on Brewery, just to have some variety and not be all the time in Batania. And I like this brewery layout more anyway. So here we go to Imperial Caravan Master. And our entry condition is triggered here. And you can see that the one to one conversation character is Imperial Caravan Master. And of course, the settlement culture Caravan Master is the same thing. So we should enter this conversation now. Howdy, would you like to purchase some artisan beer? If we go sure, I'll take one. Oh, this looks wrong. So this looks wrong. So let's see what happened there. Oh, I, I, English is not my first language. <laughs> my excuse. So I keep typoing this, this, uh, I keep typoing these ideas, but it's fine. So I, I had pur purchased it with an S and in the other place I had with C. So that is why that failed. And let's quickly see declined, declined. Okay, let's hope that they are actually working now. You have to be careful with these string ideas. Not fun. There you are. Thank you, come again. And then we exit the conversation. No, I'm good. You're lost. And we exit the conversation. Okay. So this seems pretty good. Our dialogue tree is actually working. And then we just... Let's try... Let's try the non-clickable condition and then... And let's actually implement this thing. So... There's some sort of change hero gold here. I don't know why this exists and it's not a setter on the property. But let's change hero gold with minus 200. There's also an action for changing hero gold, but to be honest, I don't care about that stuff. If you know what the actions are, 
then maybe you care, but right now I don't. Um, and the item will be... Let's actually... Well... We have the items somewhere, right? I might want to... We don't have the item anywhere. Okay. Let's make global or like let's let's put the item object somewhere in the behavior so that we don't have to um go through the object manager every time we want because we will need this in multiple places i think so let's just do something like this and we can do this on session launch that's fine So we have to go in uh, mountain blade object manager instance get object and we want item object called artisan here which is the id we specify in our item xml and then we have to on top of removing some gold from the main hero we have to go to mobile party main party and item roster is the inventory of the main party and there's something like add to counts which takes uh item object and a number so this will be artisan beer and one okay so now let's try to use up all our money to try out this condition and let's try this one as well and if all of this looks difficult to you, I promise that it will get easy with practice, or at least easier. Managing the dialog tree, it's just about like making sure that all the states you can be in the conversation make sense. And then just chaining them together. So I have a thousand right now, let's buy something to... Oh, actually, let's first... Well, we can just buy five of the beer. So how many do we have right now? We have ten. Okay, and now it's grayed out. Not enough money. We could change this text to say that you need 200. Or we could change this to say the price. We went to zero dinars and we should have 15 of the item. So this is all working. Let me put uh, one, one mug is 200 dinars. Okay, so I think the dialogue is working right now. And now our, now our artist and brewer NPC actually does something for us and now we have dialogues so thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode